We're heading into the long weekend, and that means it all ends with back to school. And that means that uh, lots and lots of money, lots of shopping. You've likely been out seeing people loading up on back to school supplies. But you know, it's not just paper pens and binders anymore. It's all about the pricey electronics like smartphones and laptops. Technology has become an essential tool in the classroom, and that means big money to many students. We caught up with the students at St. Clair College to find out just how much they are spending on technology as they get back to classes next week. Actually, I spent about three thousand dollars because I just got a brand new MacBook and like a printer and all my binders and everything. So, yeah, about three grand. A lot of money this year. I just got an iPhone yesterday. Uh, my birthday was a couple weeks ago. I got a MacBook. Uh, so yeah, I'm really investing in that kind of stuff this year. Make things a little easier. Expensive though. Almost a thousand dollars. Uh, I had to buy a laptop and everything to go with it, and then any other school supplies, like binders and pencils. I have the stuff from previous years, but I have a laptop I bought, which I paid about $1,400 for, just upgrading cell phone, better technology that way. A lot, <laughs> because everything's always being updated. Every time you come back, there's a different type of Microsoft Word that you need. So I've probably spent a good $1,500 just on electronics for this semester. I bought a new um, iPad. <laughs> I figured that's the best thing to go with. Oh, lots of money on back to school technology. You have to be up to date and current to be able to uh, succeed in your studies or do the best that you can in your studies. So I would say a couple thousand dollars for sure. I got a desktop because that's definitely and a laptop because you're going to need some mobility with your internet and accesses. But then again, they do provide that here, so. Uh, I spent about $5,000, I would say, between new laptops and different stuff and phones and everything. technology for my classes, so. About $1,000, just a laptop. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Being a mature student, I only need a couple courses, so it's textbooks. But as far as technology goes, I know that they have those clickers and stuff that they make you buy. And even with the books now, they come with software packages, so you have to install those. That's how they get you so that, you know, you, you, you can't just buy a used copy from the year before. You always have to get the latest version of software. So, you know, um, but other than that, I mean, you know, a lot of students might use uh, recorders. A lot of students might use uh, calculators. But uh, I would say the technology isn't much different other than laptops and whatever else if you want to use them I mean I think it's open according to the students some students are old school like myself where they just take notes others might want to record all their notes on a laptop per se so it's really individualistic I would suppose and you know what, whatever is going to work best for each student and, and maybe even within the course curriculum it is expensive to be a student. Those are students at St. Clair College with lighter wallets as they get ready for the start of another academic year. But technology is just as important in elementary and high schools. Just ask Doug Sadler. He's the vice principal at St. Joseph Catholic High School in Windsor and a strong advocate of improving learning through technology. Next week, his school is launching a pilot program where students will complement their learning by using high-tech devices. This week, training sessions were held to bring teachers up to speed on the devices, and CBC reporter Magda Gabrasalasi caught up with Doug Sadler at one of those training sessions. We're going to have a pilot project in a couple of our classes where students are going to have access to iPads that we have or they can use their own technology in the classroom and it'll be available at, at all times or most times when the teacher deems it appropriate where they can write all their notes on their computer, they can put all their notes in their phone or their iPod and then they can access those when they're being assessed. So we're going to have a little less emphasis, although it's still important, on the regurgitation or knowledge and understanding questions. But now we can ask questions to take that further, where they can uh, look up the information, but then they have to give opinions. They have to synthesize the information and process it and then give us answers that way. And that's where the higher level thinking comes from or critical thinking activities. So why is this the way of the future? Why even get iPads and smartphones? and this technology in classroom? Well, uh, the students are using it. They're very, not all of them, but as a general group, they're more comfortable using it, this technology. They are probably more tech comfortable with it than a lot of their teachers are. So that's why we're having days like today where we can get information out there and show people what the device can do. Uh, with the device, they can go much further than they could before. 
So I could be learning about the War of 1812, for example, and rather than just talk about it or maybe write about it, which is also very important, now I can make a movie about it. And I can use other skills and creativity skills, which are so important that we need to emphasize in all subject areas, creativity. So the device allows them to be creative using multimedia, but they're still getting the content in the curriculum of learning about, for in this example, the War of 1812. Of all the schools, how many schools have access to these devices? Well, that, that's a tough question. There are more and more are getting it every year. I would say probably 60% of our schools have access to them uh, through, uh, they, they purchased iPads, they've, uh, through parents clubs and fundraising and, and from the board, they've been able to get these devices. And primarily it's been the iPad because that one offers the greatest uh, opportunity. And we really don't have to teach the students how to use it because it's pretty intuitive. We just have to make sure we're applying it properly. You were talking a little bit about, you know, students being able to bring their own devices into schools, but not all students have access to these devices. So what happens after school ends and they go home? Some of the students have access to this material while others won't. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's definitely a problem, and, and that's why we're looking, uh, we're doing the pilot so we can determine exactly how extensive that is because it's going to have to be provided in some way or another um, because everyone needs an equal opportunity. Now with this idea, also part of the pilot is we're not abandoning the notebook, we're not abandoning paper notes, that kind of thing. It's still very important to write things down. They still have access to that. It's just uh, those who do have the technology, we want to let them take advantage of it. Isn't that creating barriers though? Some students will have notebooks and others will have iPads at home to, to do their homework? Well, if it, it was implemented full scale like that, that, there would definitely be an issue there because some would have it, some wouldn't. However, uh, in our pilot, we're going to provide the tools to make sure that everyone has access to it and we want to see if this is the direction we want to go. So it's a pilot project right now. St. Joseph's Catholic High School is going to start with it and uh, we've dedicated, we have some teachers who are going to take advantage of it. We have an actual critical thinking expert uh, on staff now who's going to help us with it. And uh, it looks like Catholic Central will be uh, looking at joining us probably second semester. So we're starting small so we can reach those uh, barriers you're talking about before we, we go further with it. That's Doug Sadler. He is the vice principal at St. Joseph's High School, and he was talking about a pilot project that will start next week to improve learning through technology. He was speaking with CBC reporter Magda Gabasalasi. For more on this story, tune in to CBC News Windsor at 6 tonight. That's uh, Cable 10, Channel 9, or, of course, on the line, online, online, cbc.ca slash Windsor. It is 21 minutes after 4 o'clock, and you are listening to The Bridge on CBC Radio 1. Bob Steele's off today. I'm filling in. My name is Sarah Elliott. Now, we're talking about students and technology, but what about students and instruments? A lot of students will start juggling